Dennis Jamalka here with Full of Pet Feeds, talking about the Mui Grande Deer Feed Line here with Dr. Greg Pollard. One of the big buzzwords is nutraceuticals. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, yeah, nutraceuticals is a word you hear thrown around quite commonly nowadays, especially with basically having to change how we treat animal feeds with antibiotics and the fact that we're not allowed to as easily as we were before. What a nutraceutical is, is this actually the combination of, the word just came out in the late 18, or late 1980s. Uh, it's actually the combination of nutrition and pharmaceutical, meaning that your food is your medicine. And so mm -hmm. it's combined to say nutraceutical. Came, the term was coined in 1989 by uh, Stephen D. Felice, but the father of modern medicine, Hippocrates, back over 3,000 years ago, actually came up with this concept is using food as your medicine and medicine as your food. Make sure that what you're consuming improves your health, doesn't mm. hurt your health. So just a quick thing here in, that we're dealing with in the United States, there's a whole lot of you know type two diabetics that, that come around. Well, food is actually what causes that. You're not, we're not consuming the right amounts of food or the right ratios of food. So when we think of nutraceuticals from an animal perspective, one of the things we're trying to do is we are trying to incorporate natural medicines. If we just went back 100, 120 years uh, and visited the doctor, they didn't have pills that they gave us. Aspirin didn't come out until the late 1890s. What they did was they prescribed plants. And you went out and you harvested these plants and you made a tea or you made some emollient or something and you put it on your skin to treat your disease or swallowed it. So are these plants in our feet? So, yes. What we're doing is instead of having to go out and actually consume a whole clove of garlic or a whole root of ginger, what we've done is we've basically used a concentrated form of that called essential oils. So these essential oils are really active plant chemicals that are added to feeds at pretty low rates. Like in an entire ton of feed, you're talking about adding less than a, a pound to the entire feed to get the right ratios that you need for animal health. Whether it's in the horse feeds or the show feeds or the deer feeds or some of the other feeds, the essential oils that are found range from oregano to clove to uh, garlic, pepper extract, anise, and cinnamon. Yeah. And they all have a different function. They all have a different function or they all have a synergistic, like some of them may do the same thing but they do it in different routes. And so we want to make sure that if it's like an antimicrobial effect, that just because cinnamon has an antimicrobial effect and so does garlic, they don't necessarily work the same way. They're different plant compounds. And so we want to make sure one, that no animal, no bacteria or harmful bacteria is resistant to it. That's why you get them with this kind of blend. And then secondly, we want to make sure that we're targeting the right species. So we use a blend because just in the case of uh, like cinnamon. Cinnamon does vasodilation just like red pepper does. Well, they work in different routes, so they're absorbed differently throughout the body. So both of them improve circulation, both of them help deal with heat stress. But they work in very, very different ways to accomplish those same goals. Uh, one of the things that uh, also causes vasodilation that's in, in your mix is uh, Rosemary. Rosemary is an antimicrobial as well, but its primarily the primary effect is to prevent food poisoning. So mm -hmm. harmful things that are in the GI tract that can get an animal sick, rosemary targets those. Whereas cinnamon targets other very different things. And then you have clove, uh, which is another essential oil that is in, in your mix as well. Clove is, is unique and it also targets respiratory pathogens, respiratory bacteria. It prevents us from upper respiratory tract infections. So it's an antimicrobial, but it works very, very different than the antimicrobial effects of garlic, cinnamon, some of these other things. The big buzzword, if you will, is capsaicin, uh, a red pepper extract, and that's because of its effects on human stress. But keep in mind, the effect that red pepper has can be amplified by having cinnamon and having some of these other essential oils in your feet, getting a better response to uh, heat stress. And that's, that's the, in the antler development stage, heat stress can be part of their, their development as 
as well. Right? Yeah, or it can it can or it can hinder it can, the can, can inhibit that development because the animal either doesn't eat uh, or doesn't eat enough uh, because they want to lay around. They're too hot. Uh, but even on things like horses or show animals, you know, it definitely anytime an animal's heat stress performance drops because they eat less, uh, they start to lose weight, or they stop growing and are gaining weight as rapid whenever they're heat stressed. We also use the kelp. Uh, believe it or not, kelp has a heat stress uh, factor as well. And so we use kelp in these feeds, uh, whether it's the deer feed or the show feeds or things like that to bring in some ultra trace minerals, things that we know that are in the body, but we not necessarily know exactly what they do, right. but kelp has it because it's harvested out of the seawater. Uh, but also kelp is known to alleviate heat stress too. So that works in a very different channel than things like red pepper dust. Thank you, Dr. Pollard. We appreciate Dr. Pollard coming. One of the big concerns w with the veterinary feed directives was the uh, addition of these nutraceuticals in our feed to help those that wanted to use a non-antibiotic feeds. So we, we appreciate you. Thank you for being with us and visit us at fullpep.com. Thank you.